Let's run it back from the top. Let's run it back from the top. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Salute to the station on this Sunday evening. Another edition of KFTV's Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com and use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. CP the franchise, Alex Taurus on the ones and twos. The Knicks headed into Milwaukee for a revenge game against the Milwaukee Bucks. Having lost a brutal game against the Chicago Bulls, this Knicks team was fighting for its playoff life and led by Captain Clutch, Jalen Brunson. He would not let his team be denied. But going into the second half, this Knicks team was down by 11 points and it was all hands on deck from OG to iHeart to Mitchie Ain't No Snitchy to Boyan and Dante's Inferno closes the door and the Knicks finish off the regular season series against the Bucks with a 122 to 109 victory tied for third in the East monster win tonight let's get it going man salute to everybody in the chat hit that thumbs up button for you boys CP and Alex on the ones and twos playoff type atmosphere tonight Mm. In Milwaukee, Tom Thibodeau in the pregame show talked about the magnitude of this moment, the intensity of these games down the stretch. Both teams coming out desperate. This Milwaukee Bucks team losing three straight. The Knicks missing out on a big opportunity against the Bulls. Both teams trying to find their way. And I got to love how Jalen Brunson set the tone for his guys tonight. Give credit because the Milwaukee Bucks defense was stout, especially in the first half. He had to earn everything. Nothing came easy. But he stuck with it, and he set a tone with 23 first-half points. But unfortunately for the Knicks, they couldn't hit from outside. Both teams, 3 of 14 from downtown. And in the first half, the biggest difference for the Bucks was their interior presence with Giannis attacking on the offensive end and Brooke Lopez being a deterrent on the defensive end. And also, they put Dame on the line for 10 free throw attempts. Bucks were able to take advantage of that. And the Knicks weren't able to close the, second, the first half well. But second half, boy, oh boy, led by a 37-point third quarter between Brunson the I Heart teardrop has been potent all night. It's still going, still dropping. Mitch. <laughs> but I thought, I really thought, man, the non Brunson minutes that Bogdanovich gave us tonight was one of the keys. He was the GOAT in the Chicago game. He's a hero in tonight's game. Bogdanovich was great. And, and Deuce, and Deuce, Bogdanovich and Deuce, Mitch. Did a great job holding it down for Jalen Brunson, and the Knicks starters were able to finish the job in the fourth, man. Give me your thoughts on this game, bro. Oh, my God, CP. This is exactly what we needed. You, you're going into this game, and I said it on the Game of the Week preview. I hope yep. you all tapped in yesterday yep. because we I said it was going to be a big game. We broke it down, and what did my guy uh, Dalton say yesterday? He said the Bucks are going to come in here desperate at the end of the show. I was like, yeah. you know who's going to come in here even more desperate? The New York Knicks. They had yeah. a game against the Chicago Bulls that they should have won. They didn't win. And look, they are fighting for their lives right now for good positioning. And CP, you knew the magnitude of this game. We all knew what it meant, yep. especially against the Bucks, who have been owning our number all season Killing long. Killing us. Killing so us. So now you tell us that we don't have Julius Randle. We don't have our 25 10 and five guy who they were given much respect to before on the broadcast. If you're watching through NBA yeah, TV, yeah. like I was today. Yeah. So you see, you're going to this game. They're acknowledging they're down an all-star. They're down an all NBA player. Now you go in there and they have their two guys. They have their two guys. They have Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And you know what? Jalen Brunson said, I don't care. I don't Had care. I'm going to own your butt and it's going to be mine. All right. Yeah. Pause. Pause. It doesn't matter. Whoa. Doesn't it's a win. Matter. It's a win. Go it's ahead, man. Win. I don't forget care. about the flagrant three. Go well, ahead and go well, off, man. I don't care, Let's man, go. Because guess what? Jalen Brunson said, I'm better than Dame. I'm yeah. better than yeah. Giannis. Put me up there. Make me all NBA this season because I am at that level. Yeah. Get at my level. Yeah. I, I mean, he. I mean, you know, big time players come through for their team in big time moments. And that's just what Brunson did. Um, you know, obviously tonight the matchup was favorable for him in terms of being able to take on 
uh, Dame and find the matchups where Dame was the weak link. Uh, find Malik Beasley, who we got into foul trouble early. Uh, but I, I still thought the Bucks did a great job of just throwing a, a, you know, a lot of bodies in his direction. Two on the ball at times. You had guys chasing him around screens. I thought, you know, the Middleton injury was pretty impactful, the Bucks not having Middleton in the second half because it kind of took one extra, you know, big body that the Bucks have and wingspan and kind of took that out of the mix where the Bucks weren't able to, you know, fluster Jalen Brunson in that way. I thought that was big, and the Knicks were able to capitalize on that. So great job by Captain Clutch for sure. I also have to... I mean, so many. I mean, every every guy that every Nick that played in the rotation tonight had their moment in the sun in this game. Had key moments in this game. So we could just literally just pick anybody at random. I'll go with OG. Um, shot wasn't falling. First half, Giannis was overpowering him. Second half, bounced back in a major way. How many steals did OG finish with tonight? Three, four. How many? How many steals he finished with tonight? He was great tonight. Absolutely. OG great had. Tonight. He had. had. Let me just make sure I get the number yeah. right. Because I'm just watching the chat just go off. Oh, the chat's um, going crazy, man. He had four man. steals tonight. Four steals. Four steals. Excuse Two me. Two blocks. Excuse me. Let me put some respect on his name. Four steals for OG tonight. And so I, I thought that was big because, uh, you know, between the third quarter and the fourth quarter, I, I liked how the Knicks just played. They were able to play fast. So you're not catching a set Bucks defense in the half court. And a lot of that was because of their forced turnovers. They were able to force turnovers, and on the flip side, keep the keep, uh, keep themselves not keep themselves from turning the ball over, being safe with the basketball. I thought those were keys, and OG's defense was big time in, in that regard. CP only five turnovers tonight for the New York Knicks. That was major. Talk about protecting the rock. Yeah. And, you know, you got to give a kudos to, to Jalen Brunson, who only had one turnover tonight, yeah. and he went 16 of 32. He took 32 attempts. Wow. He had eight assists, six rebounds. He was he had the rock in his hand for most of the night. Yeah. And he only had one turnover and came out with 43 points. 43. That's phenomenal. But, yo, like, there's just so many, there's so many people tonight that you can just give, like, you know, kudos for or yeah. just, like, high praise for because of their excellence. I've got to go with McBride, though. Okay, and, let's and talk about Bogdanovich it. definitely worthy of going having an efficient scoring tonight coming off the bench in 17 minutes. You know, he went six and nine, got 15 points. He did the damn thing. But McBride, man, I mean, just from the first quarter alone, when you see Dante DiVincenzo get two quick fouls, yeah. McBride goes in there, and my goodness, I mean, right, he just decides to do a crossover, a step back three, and drills it. You know, you're like, yeah. okay. Then he comes in in the third quarter, right? Third, fourth quarter, I forget where it was, knocks down a three. Then you see him. Controlling the tempo of the game. He almost loses the rock. Gains control. Then meanders his way down the lane. Middle of the lane. And he sees two guys closing out on him. But yet he puts up the floater, teardrop, whatever you want to call it. And sinks it. The confidence for McBride right now is through yeah. the roof. And I have not seen a guy who... Because he looks, he looks swaggy right now, CP. He, yeah, he, he he's got some out. swagger out there. Yeah, right. You see how he's controlling the rock. He's like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you come match me up. Yeah, he's, he's, he's stepping it back down. He's doing everything. Oh my goodness, I gotta give McBride the kudos because he's still giving you the defensive intensity by picking up ninety four feet. Right. Yeah. So he's doing that, giving you offense. Three of six tonight. Two of four from downtown gets you eight points. But the defense is where, like, just both the combination of those things, CP. He is so key for this rotation right now in 18 minutes for what he's doing. I got to give a shout-out to McBride for what he did tonight. McBride had a key sequence in that third quarter flurry. And I mentioned in that third quarter, I said the Knicks scored 37. They scored 39 in that in that third. He, he knocked down the corner three. And then I believe on one or two possessions later, he had to drive down the lane for the scoop layup, a tough scoop layup in, 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 in front of a tough Bucks interior defense. That was a ballsy play by McBride, a tough, gritty play by McBride. And as you said, he had to take on the Dame assignment once Dante DiVincenzo picked up a lot of foul trouble. So Deuce McBride in his minutes, eight points, two or four from uh, downtown, uh, 18 minutes, three steals. Three steals for McBride. The Knicks as a mm -hmm. whole had nine steals tonight. So great job by McBride, uh, absolutely scrapping. You know, if we keep it in that third quarter with the non-Brunson minutes, it was you had the defensive trio of McBride, OG, and Mitch. Talked about OG, talked about McBride. The block nest monster put his he's stamp back. on the game tonight. Oh, and, oh and, he's and, back. And did you hear who said block nest monster tonight on the telecast? 
uh, our guy, our guy, Alan Hahn. Yeah, yeah. Who, sh- who, 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 you know, shout out to uh, let's yeah. see, because uh, I, I, we were added about this. CP. Yes, hold on. Yeah, I, I want to make sure I get the the name right. Shout out to our guy, uh, Big Daddy G. Yeah, uh, who's a, who's a Twitch streamer. Yeah, pause on yeah, that name. Absolutely. But he said, you know, he, he was like, "Do you see that Han used uh, the Blockness Monster?" Yes. You know, name. It's like, yeah. yeah, Han's a big supporter of the show, though. He, he's giving us his cr- us credit. Shout out to Alan Han, man, for salute doing the damn thing. Salute, salute to Solo, and as the nickname commissioner, I was honored for him to uh, to use that name. But Mitchell Robinson, man, how many key blocks? Did he have in this game three blocks on the night for Mitchie? You know, six boards. He probably could have had like 12, but he wasn't able to get a lot of those 50 50 balls. However, pause. I did like his effort. I did like his effort and intensity on the glass tonight because it was much needed. And one of them, I believe it was either in the third or the fourth, he had a key tip out that extended a Knicks possession, and I thought that was big. He had three offensive rebounds. Three of the six rebounds was offensive. Um, Great job by Mitch. Had a big block on Giannis. Had another big block. I forgot who it was that attacked the rim. I think it was Giannis twice Mm -hmm. where he attacked the rim, and Mitch just – you know, swallowing it up. He swatted it, man. Yeah. He, swatted it to, he swatted it to the third row, fourth row, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, um, great job. Great job there by Mitchell Robinson. Uh, Bogdanovich, 15 points for Bogdanovich, 6-9 and nine from the field, uh, one three-pointer. Did a good job just getting to his spots, man. Just did a good mm-hmm. job. Wasn't even on the threes, wasn't relying on his threes. Very patient in his offense, very patient in his attack. Bucks sent two at him at times. So... And I think you're going to see that, obviously, in the playoffs, you know, when, when a lot of teams realize that he's one of your few shot creators, Bucks actually sent a lot of attention his way, and I thought he was very patient, didn't turn the ball over like he did in Chicago, and, um, you know, just did a good job just being patient and getting his shots, man. Bogdanovich was great, and that allowed Brunson to get the proper rest that he needed to come mm-hmm. back in and finish the job. For sure, and he, he like – like I said, man, we can keep going down the list. You talk about Bogdanovich. I'm going to give a shout-out to Dante DiVincenzo going against his former team that didn't want him anymore, sent him out to Sacramento, yeah. who then had to go find his way and ends up on the New York Knicks, man. And yeah. look what he did tonight. Eight for 11 from downtown. Gets yeah. you 26 points. And, look, he was just making sure that his former team knew, like, hey, you could have had this. You, you missed out, man. And he, I thought he did a decent job guarding uh, Damian Lillard, because Dame was having a tough time, whether it was McBride, Dante, who's had success yep. guarding Dame when he was out there in Golden State, and Dame was on Portland. I mean, Dame only went 4 for 11 for tonight, but the fact that you could, it was interchangeable between Dante and McBride, McBride obviously doing the better job, but Dante going out there, making sure that he was chasing around screens as well, trailing, so that way, you know, Dame was just off the line, right? Yeah. You didn't see Dame get comfortable tonight, which is what you needed to do. You wanted to force all that on Giannis because he's coming back from injury. See if he's good to go and can put and can shoulder the rest of like the team on his back, right? Yeah. And make sure that he that team could if they could win. Couldn't do that tonight. You need a Dame. And yeah. that's why for part of this game, I was a little upset because some of the fouls, man, once again, inconsistency. I mean, yeah, he looked at the free brutal. throw line. Fifteen free throw attempts, you know, no yeah. biggie, I guess. Um, but hey. The fact that Dante was able to contribute to making Dame uncomfortable and then in return was just knocking down tough threes, tough. wide open wilt threes. That's what we were missing as a Knicks team in years past, man. A guy that's reliable, whether he's open or being highly contested. How about the one in front of Bobby Portis? Mm. How about and, that and one, Bob, Bobby started going off, man. And Bobby was cooking. Bobby was cooking. Bobby was definitely cooking. Give him credit. You know, he always likes to turn up the Jets against us, especially when Julius is out there. So uh, they were able to weather that storm. Great job. And, and yeah, just, just a great job overall um, by, by these guys. And DiVincenzo stepping it up, especially in the fourth quarter. It was Dante's Inferno once again. And uh, 26 points for DiVincenzo, four rebounds, three assists, eight of 11 from downtown. Great job just coming alive at the right time for Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, another guy, Hart. Seven points, nine assists, nine rebounds for Josh Hart. You know, I'm not sure if... It's it's the uh, the right wrist that's bothering him. Remember when he talked about being injured? He said um, he said something along the lines of "I can't shoot with it right now." And then in this game, he looked like he hurt his left hand. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure if uh, you know it's because of the wrist that he doesn't want to shoot as much. You saw some times where he got a little tentative, especially when he got close to the basket. Some shots that he wanted back. 
But overall, rebounding and playmaking, he was sensational tonight. Had to guard Giannis at times. Vastly undersized, but trying to hold his own. Um, That Mitch Block that you saw on Giannis was Josh Hart sending him to Mitch. So he did a good job there. But overall, I thought where he shined was, again, bending the defense in the second half and making plays for others. That was critical. And, And Josh Hart definitely turned up the Jets in the second half. Great job by him, man. Absolutely. Good stuff by Josh Hart. You know, shot wasn't necessarily falling, but he did everything else, man. This is what you like about Josh Hart is that even when the offense isn't there, he's still able to contribute to another factor, whether that be defense, just facilitating, grabbing boards. And you see how important he was in that Chicago game. Because look at tonight, CP. We talk about the rebound battle. Knicks beating the Bucks 41 to 38. And your top rebounder for tonight, Isaiah Hartenstein with 10. Who is the next guy? Josh Hart with nine rebounds. That's how important he is to this team when it comes to securing de- like defensive rebounds because to limit the opponent's possession and then to start again, that's where he's just so critical for this team, man. And it's been a big challenge since you don't have Julius, who's another solid defensive rebounder for this team. But Josh Hart has stepped up and has answered the bill when it comes to being that guy to being able to be one of the second, if not sometimes the best rebounder on this team, depending on the night. And and in in terms of importance, I would say probably the second most important Nick right now, man. Uh, Absolutely. 2,000 people on the check-in out. So to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Throw a number three in the chat tonight. One for Josh Hart, but also because the Knicks have tied and moved up to the third Mm. spot, Al. Moved up to the third spot. We'll get into the to the standings in just a bit. Phone lines are up. Phones are back up. 657-383-1509. The Discord is up as well. Call us up, Knicks Nation. Let us know your thoughts on tonight's game because I don't know about you, Al, but I felt the playoff intensity in this one. I was screaming at the TV tonight for probably the first time all year. All game. Ooh. It's it's wow. that time. It's money time right now, bro. It's money it's that time. that time for you, huh? Yeah, it's that time. It's that CP. time. CP. Yeah, it, it was playoff intensity. OK, like I said, yeah. we knew what was on the line for tonight. Yeah, it is positioning. Yeah, the, look, look, the Cavs lost tonight. Where are they right now? They're fifth. Yeah. Right. You got the Pacers right on their heels. Forty five and thirty four. Miami just lost one. All right. So we're, but they're not too far back. Yeah. They're not Miami lost to the Pacers got, tonight. Lost to the Pacers tonight. Yeah. And then you got and you got the Sixers who are back with Embiid, right? So there, it, it's serious right now. You got to make sure you close out the rest of the season. Yeah, we're gonna have who the Bulls again? We got the Bulls again Bulls on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Smack them so, around. They got to smack look, them around. We we got we got to get payback. All right, we yeah. got to get payback against the Chicago Bulls. But CP, I, it's that time of the season, man. Like it's that time. I, I'm gearing up. You you're you're screaming at the TV. I'm hype. I'm hype. Let me tell you. You know what time it is for me, and I want yeah. to know for everybody in the chat right now: Is it this time? Is it time for you <laughs> Wait, hey, 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 to be okay? Put me on the put me on, on the solo. Right. We, we got to do this solo. properly. We got to do this properly, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Uh, I need to know from the people: hang on, Are hang you on. ready? Are we ready? <laughs> We're ready. Wait, are you hey. people ready to be jumping out the window tonight? <laughs> Who's jumping out the window Let's with go. me? Because Let's look. Go. We're talking about the New York Knicks coming in here. They were skidding. They were up and down. We just lost to the Chicago Bulls. We had a great win against the Kings. Things were starting to look gloomy. You come into this game against the Bucs who have been owning us this season, and next thing you know, they come out here with a spectacular win. I'm jumping out the window tonight, CP. Who else is jumping out the window tonight? Who is not afraid? Who who should be afraid of us? Everybody. Why? Because this team's got Jalen Brunson. This team is fighting with all of its heart. And they're competing without Julius Randle. And wait until next season when this team's healthy. Good war, it man. Ain't so over, I'm jumping man. tonight. I'm ready. Let's Take go. out the headphones. Out of there. Out of there. No parachute. See you later, man. It's that type of night, man. It is that type of night, people. How you feeling? Call us up, 657-383-1509. Or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. We just put the standings up. The New York Knicks are sitting in. Right now it's fourth. Because they don't own the tiebreaker with the Orlando Magic, who won tonight. Orlando beating the Bulls tonight. But both teams are within one game of a reeling Milwaukee Buck team that saw their head coach wave the white flag. He threw in the towel tonight with a minute. How much? A minute 30 left. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, Al. What a disgrace. Man. What a disgrace. But thank God it's and, not uh, my team. I, I, give, I give a shout out to our guy, uh, Andrew Solop, a.k.a. Yeah. the one-two combo. Um, you know, 
okay if you haven't got if, if all of you haven't checked out yet we got another channel the nba report where we cover the league at large absolutely and we discussed the milwaukee bucks yesterday and so i am once again going to say i do not trust this team with my life cp yeah when i'm looking at the milwaukee bucks and doc rivers how do you keep getting jobs crazy how crazy bro he has had Kawhi and pg he has had now, Joel Embiid, James Harden, and Tyrese Maxey. He is now having Dame and Giannis. And yet this team is looking catastrophically bad. Yeah. It is just awful. Bad. Awful. I, I had a feeling that the defense that they played in the first half, like I felt like that was the best they were going to be able to do. I didn't I didn't think they were going to be able to, to sustain that for an entire game. And so – Give credit to the Knicks, man, because they really turned up their intensity. Coming out down 11, they didn't give in. They kept at it, and they were the aggressors for the entire second half to a man. Uh, this Bucks team just wanted no more, except for Bobby Portis. <laughs> it seemed like Bobby Portis was the only one ready to fight, keep, keep the fight. But just great job by the Knicks. Just under, understanding uh, the magnitude of the moment. It was a much-needed win. You have guys, you have Indiana creeping up. You have Philadelphia starting to play well, so you can't play around, man. You, you have to maintain your position or even try to move up when you can. So great job, 122 to 109. They will head back to Chi-Town tonight and uh, look for revenge on Tuesday night, man. Salute to Nixon Dimes, Al Fight Out Super Chat. Says, I'm jumping out of a plane with no parachutes. Ooh. All right, so there you go. So Al set the tone. My guy is hyped. Absolutely. Shout out to Nixon Dimes. Absolutely. Shout out to Nixon Dimes. Shout out to Cameron Platt. $10 Super Chat says, this is why I'm a Knicks fan. Hashtag replay gang. Salute to Cameron Platt. Salute to all the diehard Knicks fans out there, man. Hit that number three in the chat. Salute to the Rhyme Animal Chuck D. $10 Super Chat. Al and a franchise channel member says, OMG, I really can't put it into words, but this was something, especially how much I couldn't stand this team wiping us at the beginning of the year. Year, Rivers seriously might be Glenn again after this season. <laughs> Salute to Louis Rios. Franchise channel member, $10 Super Chat says, the boys were cooking in the second half. No question about it. Brian Arante, $5 Super Chat says, uh, second half, and that's how you're playing without Randall. Let's go. Can we trade Burks for Bobby Portis back? Salute. Salute to him. Uh, I have how about I heart with the teardrops, man? Man. What what do you go, it, like it, six or seven for, with that shot tonight? Uh feels like it. I mean, the thing with like we know iHeart has had a floater, right? Since last season, yeah. but it just doesn't feel like he gets his number called enough in some games. But yeah. CP, I mean, we also gotta be real. The the Milwaukee Bucks have a poor defense right now, especially yeah. from the perimeter. So with the way Brunson, Dante, anybody was able to attack just from shooting threes. You couldn't really pack the paint, which is the same thing Doc Rivers likes to do. I mean, him and Tibbs run that same type of system, drop coverage. So you can't really leave anybody yeah. if they're all shooting the threes. So it just gave iHeart the opportunity to attack the paint man and get his floaters back up. But talk about it. Like, we needed scoring. And if it wasn't going to be Josh Hart in that starting unit, it was going to be the other Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein tonight, man. I Hart. 18 points. Man, he and, had nine. And I thought he really set a good tone on the boards at first. He was scrapping. He was scrapping all game. And in the first half, I thought his rebounding was was key to keeping us, you know, within striking distance the entire time. He finishes with a double-double, 18 points, 10 rebounds, and assists to steal, 8 and 9 from the field. Like I said, I, th I felt like all nine of those attempts were the, were the floaters that, he was, that mm -hmm. they were giving him, and he was just knocking them down. So great touch around the rim for Ihart, great rebounding, great hustle, and the Knicks bigs between Ihart and Mitch on the defensive end, they did what they needed to do against a stout, Bucks interior. So great job all the way around. Okay, to the Discord we go. Keith Cap. Keith Cap, go ahead and unmute your mic. Keith Cap, going once. Can you guys hear me? Yep, loud and clear. How you feeling, bro? I'm good, man. I, you know, great win. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, OG, you know, really, you know, his defense on Giannis, you could see the you know, Giannis was getting very frustrated and very yeah. flustered, and I think that came in big time. And that was something we definitely missed when we placed when we used to when we play one of these teams when they had a superstar. You know, OG can really get in their heads, and I think that's really important. Yep. Um, dominant dominant game for Jalen Brunson. You know, at this point, we expect nothing less. And you know, he was getting 
some of the calls that he deserved a little some late whistles tonight but you know the Knicks pulled out the win you know great performance and Dante really stepped it up you know late in the fourth and knew what he had to do and he did it and you know tonight if that's what playoffs are going to look like I think we should we could expect a little bit more too because I think yeah. this team can be very dangerous and next year if you, when once you add Julie, a healthy Julius Randle I think we're looking at a big thing to compete for yeah, th- th- there you go, man. Appreciate the call, man. Call back anytime. Call back Thank you, anytime. man. Yeah, I, I thought I thought even though I like to have the Bucks came out and played defense in this game, the Knicks had their opportunity, especially in the first half. They just weren't knocking them down. Like, a lot of Brunson shots weren't hitting. Um, DiVincenzo couldn't hit earlier. OG couldn't hit his, his threes earlier. And so it was a little bit tough, you, you know. But second half, it was, they left uh, no doubts. Yeah, it went from being a poor three-point shooting team. And, I mean, shout-out to Dante for being the one to lead the way. But then the Knicks, you know, end the game with 48% shooting from downtown. You know, a lot of it, they were being aggressive, which, you know, we had that in-depth conversation uh, after the Bulls game. And I thought the Knicks came out trying to be the team that punched first. And, unfortunately, you know, once again, it comes down to, like, just getting into rhythm, maybe being a little tired to start off games. But... Thankfully, they were able to get into rhythm as a team in the second half. Jalen Brunson, though, just found it in the first quarter. You know, he missed a few. He he got his first shot, missed a couple more after that, but then really got into rhythm afterwards. For sure. $10 Super Chat from Will N. Says the fact that the Knicks are still staying in good standings despite all of their injuries just goes to show how much depth this team has. Can you imagine a fully healthy Knicks team? Just like our, our caller said. Yeah, no question. Well, we'll worry about that. When the time comes, or for right now, it's uh, it's next man up, and and, and everybody um, had their hands in this. So great job, Nixon Dimes house. Salute to Nixon Dimes, a franchise channel member, just gifted five franchise channel memberships. So shout out to Nixon Dimes. They're in the giving mood. Shout out to them. Shout out to Will Aquino. Fight out super chat says uh, Nixon one twenty two bucks and refs one oh nine bucks and refs one oh nine. Yeah, so there's another battle with the zebras tonight, but. We were able to prevail, so it is what it is. Will be, will be on the Discord. Let's go. Will he be on the Discord? Going once. Will he be five zero nine? Yo, yo, yo. yo, how you feeling? Chilling, chilling, man. What's going on? First time caller. How y'all doing? Chilling, man. Where, where you checking in from, man? Um uh, man, I live in um, Central Florida, um, Melbourne, Florida. Okay, Melbourne, check it in. Salute, man. How you feeling tonight, man? You know, yeah, chilling, chilling, man. You know, we how how we do it. Yeah. Um, I was just saying, man, the um, the lineup that they had was there a lineup with Mitch, Mitch, OG, yes. Divincenzo, Bogey, or Brunson? Uh, it was it. I think I think was it, they, was they, it they, Deuce? They, it was Deuce in there. Deuce was in there for the most oh, part. Oh my god. They locked up. I've been waiting for I've been waiting for those lineups. They locked up. With OG and Mitch. Yeah. Come on, man. They locked up. How are we up. gonna do that? And then and then the bonus was that you were able to have three stout defenders kind of protect Bogdanovich as well. So in the event yeah, that, he, you know, he gave up a big play, you had a lot of safety blankets there. That was a great move by Tibbs. Great lineup. He, he looked like an all star out there with them. Yeah. Yep. This is the, these lineups we talking about. Yep. You know, I, we miss we miss we miss um Randall, but you know, yo, if we come if we play Orlando, I'm I'm there. I'm like right okay. right around the corner. So Pull I don't up. know, y'all coming down? Pull up, yeah, yeah, I'm in there, man. I'm in there. Come on, man. You you just make sure you Let's make it, it, man. You just make sure you make it. Hey. We out there, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm an hour I'm an hour away from it. Say less. Come on, man. Say less. Stop in, in Tampa because we got to get Rambo as well, man. You got to pick up Rambo and, and meet us over there as well, man. Let's do it. All right, I'll let your boy, man. Call back anytime. All right, bro. Willie yeah. Willie B checking in from Florida, Al. Mm. Al, that unit, um, in the fourth quarter, it was eighty nine to eighty five. The non Brunson minutes. And he came back in the fourth at around, came back at 8-11. So you had about mm-hmm. four minutes where Jalen Brunson was able to get rest in the fourth quarter. Knicks went on a 10-5 run in that time. Huge. 10-4, 10-4, 10-4. It was a 10-4 run without Brunson on the floor. 10-4. And you talk about a lineup of McBride, who had 
a three and a floater. So he had five. He had half of those points. Yeah. And then you have Mitch out there giving you some stout paint protection. OG giving you some solid perimeter. You know, those three alone out there, it's that is job. just brutal for it's any nice. team. Okay. Yeah. And to, and we got to give Dante some shine too because Dante is a solid like team defender where yeah. he understands when to jump the passing lane. Yeah. So if yeah. you're going to have McBride, Dante, OG, and Mitch out there, there's a lot of safety to leave Bogdanovich out there to play the four, to play the three or the four, whatever position he's out there, you know, for. But for sure. You got some solid defense out there with all four of those guys. Absolutely. A absolutely, man. Uh, salute to Anthony Parasol. My guy just checked in on the chat. Salute to Anthony. Uh, let's get to the phones, man. Hear what the people got to say. 605. 605. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? What's up, guys? My name is Alex, too. Uh, Alex, too. What's good, man? South Dakota. South Dakota? Uh, what the South hell is a Knicks fan doing in South great. Dakota, man? Grew up in New York. My mom's from South Dakota, so I moved home. Wow. But uh, still rooting for the Knicks all these years. Um, yeah. I didn't even know there are people out there. Detroit. Say, say that again? What's that? I said I didn't even know there are people in South Dakota. That That's great, man. <laughs> I'm probably the only Knicks fan here, but uh, I love tuning into your guys' show to get you know be able to connect with other Knicks fans. Listen to you guys, been listening to you all season. Uh, haven't yeah. really been following the Knicks too much the last two years, as I'm sure you can understand. But yeah. this year's been exciting. Yeah. So uh, the beautiful game tonight, loved it. Um, I hope we can keep playing like this, like tonight. Um, earlier, I was watching a TikTok video, and someone was debating who was the best point guard in the east mm. and they were they were trying to argue for dame yeah and i hope tonight put that argument to rest yeah i mean listen Brunson man da down. Dame, dame is a legend no question about it um he, he he will always be but it's brunson's time he's show he's showing you that all season yeah uh other than that, i also want to just shout out to Vincenzo for yep. hitting those threes in the fourth quarter I hope he can uh, become a clutch three shoot three point shooter like that in fourth quarter games like that. Absolutely, man. Hopefully, Good. hopefully he gets it back in in Chicago for sure. All right. Well, I was gonna keep it on rapid fire, but uh, first time calling in, but yeah. been listening a lot this year. So keep it up, guys, and I appreciate you. Chat, tap in with us, man. Our first Knicks fan from South Dakota, Al. First ever South first, Dakota. The first caller ever from South Dakota. Salute to you, man. You're a pioneer, man. He's truly a pioneer. I mean, yeah. you're out there in South Dakota watching the Knicks. I yeah. mean, what else is out there besides Mount Rushmore and cell towers? So right. I, I have right. no idea. Right. The For one sure. said that's evil Alex. So, you know, how we had uh, evil Dante. I yeah. guess we have evil, evil Alex, Alex in South Dakota. Yeah. No, but he yeah. sounds like a nice guy, man. I, he I, sounds I, like a really I nice guy. I couldn't imagine South I'm Dakota not, being people being, you know, mad. What are they mad about, man? They're being in South Dakota? They're out there in the wilderness, man. It's a great outdoors. Oh, you wouldn't be mad about you know? being in South Dakota? <laughs> I mean, if if they're out there, clearly not, man. They enjoying it, you know. Well, what if you were born out there by you know you, you know you didn't have really an op you didn't have a chance. It was it was just you know your parents are out there. You you're just there. You you go to you go to uh you know Mount Rushmore. You got a bike. You go to Sturgis, right? I know about Sturgis. South Dakota, man. People in the chat think I don't know about South Dakota. I know my geography, man. Three, yeah, four, well, what, what's it next to, CP? <laughs> uh, next question. Three, four, seven. What's your name? What are you calling it? <laughs> Hi there. Can you hear me? Lady D, what's going on? Hi, CP. Hi, Alex. <laughs> How you feel? How you Listen, feeling today? I just, oh, I'm, what? I am feeling so, so because my next night is out the box. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just want to give you guys a shout out because y'all did such an excellent job of breaking down all the beautiful points of this game. I was, you know, making notes for a rapid fire, but y'all hit all of them. All Appreciate of them. So I'll just say this. Um, Mitch, let me tell you, me and my husband, mm -hmm. between Mitch with his amazing blocking mm -hmm. and with a, with Deuce dropping those three pointers and even Chenzo coming back and saving the three point <laughs> Me, they had us jumping off our recliners and <laughs> doing high fives and screaming at the TV. Let's go. Okay, but I just I do want to say this. Uh, since y'all all said it, I mean they did wonderful steals, mm -hmm. rebounds. I love the steals, the rebounds. They they even had a couple of fast breaks. So it was just a wonderful team effort. I think that the Knicks have stumbled on a formula mm -hmm. that. I, I think it's the, the, the way to go. Like, I know that all season long we've been talking about getting that big one star. Mm -hmm. 
But to be honest, I think it's a lot more more fruitful and productive when people are not looking to just a one star thing. I know that's the general formula for the for the for the industry, but mm-hmm. they've stumbled on something. I'd rather have a whole team of players that can mm-hmm. rock and roll and, and step up to the plate than everything just be on yeah. the shoulders of maybe one, two or three players and I, you know, I wouldn't be mad if instead of trying to get a quote unquote big star, that they see the stars that they have yeah. and they continue to encourage them to do this formula. The other okay. thing that I would mention is, I'm sorry, what did you say? No, no, no. I said okay, okay. Oh yeah, and one one last thing I would yeah. mention is that I that I do think that they need. I, I am. I applaud them. I'm so proud of them. I'm through the moon for, for their performance tonight mm-hmm. and the fact that they're tied for the, for the third. But the one thing just as an encouragement that I think that as they continue to grow and move forward, to, I, I would like to see them figure out those moments when they don't have their momentum. Because I'm, I'm yeah. of the opinion that when the Knicks are at their best like this, nobody can beat them. Yeah. Like, I mean, they they can try, but they definitely will have a hard run. Okay. Like, we definitely are contenders, but sometimes I think we kind of beat ourselves in yeah. those when we get those L's, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that I hope that they can, with the, the magic that they had happening tonight, mm-hmm. which they had done often, you know, yeah. they, they're very gritty. They know how to fight back. They know how to push through. But if they can figure out how to stay at that level, from the first quarter, yep. and maybe, I don't know if this is too much to ask, mm-hmm. but if if they find us some of the slump, I love the fact that they're human and they they're not like they they're not pompous. They're humble. They'll say, yeah. "Hey, we just got to fight. We got to get the win somehow." But if they can figure that part out, yeah, I think that they will be unstoppable. Last gotcha. comment, I would just like to say, mm-hmm. this team is special. And gotcha. it's, I think it's the best team we've had since Patrick Ewing's days. Okay. And I really want to see them win. Love Let's them. Go. Love my Knicks. Appreciate the, the call. Woo! Appreciate the call. Lady D is hype. Rate that call in the chat. Uh, throw some fives in the chat. That was a five-star call. She she was hyped, man. Hyped. Yeah. Hyped, yeah. CP. I was, I was trying to find my window. I, you know, I, she, she was hyped. I didn't, you know. I We got a lot of callers. We would like it to be rapid fire, but she was hyped. I was trying to find my window to say appreciate the call, you know, kind of like double dutch. Now you're trying to I wait. I know you're talking about the window to say thank you and, and yeah, you know, you're not, and you're hang like up, in, or in double you're dutch. Trying to, like, so you, 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 you're trying to because I know you got the music. I know you can play the music. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. She's a nice lady, and she came. She came with some fire. It was a five star call. I didn't want to. It was a five star call. On, you know. <laughs> call back. Hey man, you gotta let you gotta let the fans. You know, you gotta let marinate. Sometime, it's that man. type of night. It's that type of night. Back on track. Order restored. You saw how, how hype I was in pregame, man. I was hype, man. You were. Yeah. You were. Before we even signed on, you throw on the camera, you were. I was hype, man. Shouting. I was hype, man. It was a big game because, you know, they said on the telecast, Knicks had lost 10 out of the last 11 to this team. And the way this thing was going and Giannis is steamrolling people and Dame going to the free throw line, 10 free throw attempts. The fact that they weren't able to – uh uh, you know, close the lead. They they had closed the lead to three in this in the second quarter, and then all of a sudden it's eleven. I'm, I'm, they couldn't close it, and mm-hmm. so you know I'm on edge. You know the Knicks chick uh, in in her usual optimistic self. She's telling me to calm down. They're, they're gonna be all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's always how it goes, and so that that's how it went. You know, second half they really the yin to, to your yang, isn't it? The yin to the yang, the yin to the yang, man. You know, um. So yeah, there there that is. All right, let's get to. Some more callers. Oh, here he is. Right on time. Right on time, man. J. Cal in the building. Let's hear from him, man. Mr. Jason Cal Canis. J. Cal, what's good? Oh, can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. How are you? Mm-hmm. Crispy in the Discord. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, man. So excited about this. Yeah. J. Cal, check, check, your, uh, check your mic volume. Give me, give me a mic check real quick. Mic check one, two. Go again. Okay, check one, two, check one, two. Maybe I, let me let me raise the input here. Yeah. Test, test, test. Perfect now. Now you're good. HD. All right, now we're perfect. All right, yep. listen, I want to have a hard conversation. I don't want to jump Let's out go. the window here. <laughs> <sighs> Let's <Man>. go. <laughs> All right. This is, I don't even want to say it out loud. Uh-oh. But I'm going to say it. You hear it. Let's go. I'm going to say it. Here we go. <laughs> Might as well do it. Julius Randle, his performance 
has been spectacular at times this season. Yes. However, Julius playoff Julius, we all know, is a problem. Mm-hmm. And not a problem in a good way. A problem in, you know, he costs us games sometimes. Mm-hmm. And he, he has not performed. I, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, all up in the statistics here, but mm-hmm. I just pulled up on that stat muse, the playoff points per game. You know, yeah, not season great. 16, 18, the, you know, in that 20, 21 with the Hawks and everything. And obviously he wasn't ready for the big stage then. I, how much worse? This is yeah. what I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. How much worse are we? And Alex, I want to hear your view as well. How much worse mm-hmm. are we without him? 5%, 10%, 15%. I mean, listen, I know he's an all-star. I know he's yeah. incredible. But his playoff performance has not been good. And we have OG now. Yeah. I and agree. Hart and Stein has played outrageously. I would so say I would say this. All all facts that he hasn't performed, but you can't discount his presence on the court and and what that does for a defense because you, you can't ignore him. And so a good yeah. coach like a Spolstra, this is why I don't want to play Miami in the playoffs, because he can make the Knicks a one dimensional team. Mm. And so, you know, yeah. when you go up against a better coach and a better defense, like this Bucks defense is not, it's not good. It's not good. They've improved, but they're not good. And so, yes, your role, the role players on the Knicks had a better time tonight. But, you know, if you play in Miami, you play a different team or a better defense, is that necessarily going to be the case when most teams are going to key in on Brunson? I agree. Yeah, with that. no, Just I mean, I agree. So, ten, what do you think, Alex? Ten, are we ten percent worse? Twenty percent worse? I mean, do you think we get to the second round? And I'll leave it at that. I, rapid fire. I think. I think we are like probably somewhere between ten to twenty percent worse without Julius, just because of what CP said. That attention that Randall does bring. I mean, it's two guys that you have on the team that attract double and triple teams. So, between him and Brunson, that's where you can just find a lot of the mismatch. And even with you know Randall out there with the second unit or Brunson out there with the second unit, it gives a guy. It gives that unit just a, like a consistent score. I know he hasn't performed well in the playoffs. I actually believe that this was going to be the year he could do it because he was playing his brand of basketball. But, you know, I, I won't discount how impactful he is just as a presence. I mean, we saw that last year against the Cavs and, and the Heat. You still had to honor him and not let him get to his spots. Yeah, that, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. I think the, the presence is, is important uh, because you just don't know if, if this team is going to be able to knock down the threes in the postseason. They ended up shooting 48% from three after going three of 14 in the first half. So, you know, they had a good night. Steven Tenzo, eight of 11 from downtown. Is he going to be able to do that in the postseason when they're closing out uh, on, on his threes, right? Forcing him to put the ball on the floor because that's where his weakness is. He doesn't have the wingspan to finish in the lane. He's not a guy that's always going to draw contact. A lot of times he loses it or he, or he just flat out misses in the paint. And so that's going to be the scouting report on him. Josh Hart. Great job tonight as a facilitator and a rebounder, but will his scoring be needed? You know, in the playoffs, shot creation is, is still important, still very important. So just having even Julius out there, even though he struggles, his potential alone, I think, would, would help. Clearly, we're a better team with him this year. Yeah. The last, two, you know, two years ago in the playoffs, last year, mm, you know. So we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm still excited for next yeah. year, and yeah. I think I – think, you do not want to face the Knicks. I don't think anybody in the East wants to face yeah. the Knicks right now. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, great job, uh, and congratulations on all the episodes and everything. Yes, sir. Been on a, on a str- you know, one podcaster to another. I know you've been on a hot streak right now, so just keep putting the shot up. My guy, pre- sh- appreciate you, Jake. I appreciate you, man. Definitely got to catch up. My guy, Jason Calcanis, on the Discord. He kind of got the Julius Hive a little tight, man. Jake Cal got some tomatoes in the chat, man. Mm. I think it's a fair question. I think he insulted them a little bit. No, it's a fair question. Um, But, you know, I continue to say the the core competencies. I'll give you a business term, Al. The core competencies (laughs) of this team. Sometimes I miss that core of America life. Not really, Mm. but sometimes. The core competencies of this team being their defense, their rebounding ability, and still their size has not left. Uh, and I think that is what will be like allow them to stay in a lot of these games. 
you know, look at the lineup with the potential when you saw OG, Mitch, and 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 and, and McBride out there with with Dante. That's mm-hmm. tough. It is tough. That's tough for a second the, unit, quote unquote. Well, here's some of the key elements. Oh, that's my that's my that's my legal ease. Okay, sorry, sorry, gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It's all good. Yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so some of the key elements, you know, when you look at this Knicks team, is that they're they're still together, right? Like you still have the rebounding that's still there. You yeah. still have the ability to just attack and just still have somebody who can score in isolation, right? You have this ability also to just know how to like muddy the waters. Like even when it just is outside of defense, like how real to slow down the game and work the half court on offense as well. So the, like the core element of this group is still the same. You add Julius around into that mix and it just enhances that. Yep. And I think that's been the biggest, that's been, I guess the biggest revelation for this team is that they're able to do the same thing, even without Julius to such a high level that if you, that's why they were cooking in January, yeah. right? That's why they yeah. went on that run. I mean, they ended January. I know it was, I, I can't remember if Julius was there to finish out off January, but they went 14 and two. Yep. Like that, yep. that doesn't happen just because, you know, for no reason we're talking about OG just being added to the mix halfway through the season. So to me, the fact that this team has still been able to tread water, maintain the playoff positioning that they have been with this current roster and just Jalen Brunson, who everyone loves to criticize. He's too small. He can't do this. He's not a 1A. It's why it's a load of nonsense. Yeah. Because look where they are right now. All right? But yet, by the way, they give that same praise to Donovan Mitchell, by the way, who is also a, a small guard who, you know, look where the Cavs are now yeah. without him. Anyway, yeah. uh, it's just impressive. So you, you add Julius back to this mix, it changes everything. I mean, the one thing we just have to see, and this is where – I think even if you think about the injury to Julius right now and why the team said, you know what, why don't we just stop? Because we don't know whether or not, we don't know the conversation between Julius, the doctor, and the team itself, right? Julius could have still potentially wanted to work through and come back for a postseason. We don't know that. But maybe based on all the discussions that they had, they're saying, you know, as a team, we can't allow you to do that because your health and your production for the future is more important than just, yeah, potentially just this playoffs. We, we need you for a longer period of time to be healthy. So he could have came back. And I think another, what I'm trying to get to is that they maybe protected him from himself from having another bad playoff performance as well. Yeah. He, we don't know if Joyce wanted to come back. We don't know. Ultimately, like we know everyone agreed on the decision for him to get surgery, but we don't know truly where Julius was outside of, he was trying to make an attempt to come back. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Where's everybody checking in from in the chat, man? Throw your cities, throw your countries, wherever you guys are checking in from. Throw it in the chat. If you're not able to type into, into the chat right now, there's over 2,000 people watching. That means you're not subscribed to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button. It's free to do so. Hit the subscribe button, share the video, and hit the like button. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. That's what we've been saying since episode one. We're, in, we're now on episode 505. So we've been doing it for 500 episodes. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Please and thank you. Okay. Shout out to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D. Al. $20 Super Chat says, J. Cal's correct. This is a Dame issue because superstars, respectfully, he knows he has to get Giannis the ball. JB right now is 100% control of the floor. No deferral. It's a weird offense forming when he's doubled. Nova style. And the thing about JB is that, you know, without Julius, maybe, this is a great thing for him because this is the first time where he's going to get a much more extended amount of time where he has to be the guy. Not just to score, he has to play make and make his teammates better. He did it. He had to do it a little bit with Dallas when Luka went out in that playoff series, just a little bit. But now he's got to go a full series here. No Julius. And he, you know, Hart's going to share the workload, and, and Hartenstein is a great passer as well. OG's a smart passer, DiVincenzo, but Brunson still has to be the guy. And he had double-digit assists in his last two games. He had eight assists tonight, very important. Uh, last five games, he was averaging 36-9 uh, on the campaign. He had 43-8 and eight tonight, 50% from the field, and 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. You know, I'm going to read a, a I'm going to read a Instagram 
uh, quote from Julius Randle. This is what he had in his, you know, in his uh, yeah, in his description. It says the journey is the journey. Just keep going. It is what you think it is. Okay. And he had the prayer emojis. All right. Yeah. And I'm gonna use this as applicable to not only him, but it's also to Brunson as well because you, we don't know like the journey is still going on, right? Like the team is entering their championship mode. So for Randall, it's a setback for him. He gets more time to rest, come back. Maybe something's even different for him next season. You and I both have agreed that maybe him not starting next year, coming midway, is better for him because this is a guy that likes to play all 82 games if possible. We know he's an Iron Man. Sometimes he need, yeah. he's not going to take rest. Maybe this is the rest that he needs so that way he can be fresh and to be ready for a playoffs and perform well because even going back to last season, right, we know that after that double OT against Boston, he started to decline in production-wise, like how yeah. he was playing. It was all uneven. Now, I'm going to use this for Jalen in the sense that this is still his journey where it's like he's on this journey now where it's, as you said, he's the sole guy going into the playoffs. This is only a good thing for him in the sense of it will only push him to be better, right? Mm -hmm. So you could say after this year, if he, if he works and say they do get out of the first round, they make it to the second round, that takes him to a whole other level as a player, right? Not only now do you have two guys that you got to worry about, but one guy has now solidified himself as being that guy, that yeah. superstar where he can carry you. And if Brunson becomes that level, then you can start talking about what Lady D was saying. It's like, do you really need to trade for somebody else if you have that guy on this roster that can take you, to, that has already achieved that next level? Because then you could just start saying, saying, all right, what are the ancillary pieces that we need to this roster? Do we just yeah. need a bona fide six man? Do we just need another guy who can do some solid rebounding? Do we just need an instant scorer off the bench that's a little bit more consistent? You know, someone like a Lou Williams, like back in the day, Lou Williams or Jamal Crawford. Is that what we really need? So for Jalen, this is a good opportunity for him to show that, hey, he can be that guy. And if he does elevate his game to that level, then as a Knicks organization, you can go into the offseason feeling a little bit more confident in what you have in-house. True. But saying, hey, maybe we True. don't really need to go be desperate now to go get that superstar. We have the assets. Yeah. Maybe now we get to play the, the, be in the driver's seat of saying we get to be selective of who we want. Yeah. And they, and they do need to go get a guy. Owen A, franchise channel member, fight out Super Chat says, great win. Knicks showed the heart of a lion. Let the march to the second seed continue. Great show as always, fellas. Owen A, always in here. Appreciate the support. 10 now Super Chat out from Gary Riker says, uh, we can do this without Randall. So he's a believer. He's like Lady A, Lady D. He's like J. Cal. He says, we don't need that when it comes to Julius Randall. 3,000 people in here on the check, and make sure you guys are hitting the like button, the share button, subscribe to the channel. The number one show for the fans, by the fans, is on and popping. And speaking of journey, Al, uh, a source told me that Julius Randle's making a journey to Los Angeles tonight. So maybe he's going to get the surgery, or who knows? I don't know. You know, Maybe he's going to shoot a movie or something. I don't know. But yeah, a little, little birdie to Shoot a movie? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's going to Hollywood, whatever. Uh, yeah. Julius on his way to Los Angeles, so maybe he's going to get the surgery this week. Who knows? I'm pretty sure that's where he was. Yeah, he's definitely going out for surgery because he was recovering in L.A. last year when he got the ankle surgery, so he's probably going to see his doctor. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, Freddy Gonzalez, Al Fight Out, Super Chat says, Bucks might fall the fourth or fifth seed. Knicks can finish second. We might avoid the Bucks and the Celtics in the first two rounds. Let's go, Knicks. Two, three, six, seven is what you're looking at if you're trying to get out the first round and avoid the Celtics in the second round. Shout out Art Man, formerly known as Steve Al, franchise channel member, says Doc is going to be the first coach in NBA history to get hired at the All-Star break and fired by the beginning of the playoffs. That's hilarious. That is absolutely Bro, How hilarious. does he keep oh, – this is – I don't know. This is a run, CP. That is absolutely. Can we know. just talk about how what type of run that is? To be coaching so many great yeah. players, and yet you have not get out gotten out of the second round. I ain't talking about it on this show. This is Knicks Fan TV, the number one show for the fans by the fans. You let them hash that out on Pucks Fan TV, wherever that exists. It doesn't exist. That's why we got three thousand people in the chat. They're trying or, to tap or in or and NBA see what we talk about. How dare you? We got oh, the NBA report. That is correct. I appreciate you correcting me on that. Or the NBA report, weekdays and Saturdays. Tap in. Uh, TM, let's drop the link there so we can send the people there to subscribe. Two lifted franchise channel member Fight Out Super Chat says, a new bodega just opened up in town. Mm. You calling a bodega yet, CP? No. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What does he have to do, no. CP, to be called Bodega by you? He needs his MSG moment. He needs his yeah. MSG moment, and it could come in the playoffs. He's, he, he played well tonight, though, man. He played well. Bogdan, was, he, he was in his bag tonight. Good, Great job by him tonight, man. When I think about Bodega's CP, I think yeah. about them being consistent and always, you know, open. So Always open, right? He's a cardiac Nick, isn't he? Mm. One night he's throwing the ball all over the place. He's stumbling and bumbling. And the next night, it's pure, like Gus Johnson says. And he was Look, very man. aggressive tonight. Great job. He was. Yeah. Look, man, if I'm going to go get my chopped cheese, I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want inconsistent chopped right. cheese. Right. <laughs> right. Great, great analogy, man. Good job by you, Al. You're on the money tonight, man. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go throw in the half suit and, and hit PIX in a, in a little bit. But salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up on the feed, boys. Playoff merch is dropping tonight. Playoff merch is dropping mm. tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to getting ready to unveil the Playoff 2024 merch, man. KFTV, Chris B. Murray Collection. I was working with Chris all weekend to get this out. It is going to be a blockbuster, man. It is going to be an absolute blockbuster. Uh, so to everybody that's been putting in orders, shout out to uh, Lobriel Tejada, Al. Six in the morning, I, I, I get a notification. Lobriel Tejada is on shop.nixfantv.com getting merch. And cop like what time? Literally 5 a.m. I get this notification. I don't know if it was a, you know, a good Saturday night for him. You know, maybe he came up on some, you know, dice game was good to him or whatever. You know, <laughs> my man copped four snaps in a hoodie. So they yeah, they're getting ready for playoffs, man. You gotta get your playoff I mean, merch. Hopefully you're not just waiting outside Grand Central to take the train home because you missed yeah. the last one and it's five AM. Creative Lou in the chat. This mania is crazy. Wow. And I'm missing WrestleMania right now. No spoilers in the chat, please. I gotta catch up on it either tonight or tomorrow. My guy Rocky went off last night. I don't know if you caught it last night, man. I, I didn't, unfortunately. Yeah. I was watching a UConn and Bama play. That's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we got Reek Flair in the chat saying, my wife got mad KFTV merch too. Shout out to Reek Flair. She's a keeper. Shout out to him. And uh, salute to Will Burton, ten dollars super chat says CP. You have to make those shirts you wear available. Here's a donation to Alex's IMAX funds. <laughs> Shout out to Will Burton. He doesn't skip a beat. Doesn't skip a beat. That's how I know he tunes into every show. That's how you know. That's <laughs> how you know, man. Yeah, it's great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, you know who I also ran into at the Miami party, man. Big Ooh. Surge. Oh, Big Surge. I forgot to mention that, man. Being Big Surge had a moment. Run that. Yeah, he came with the whole family, man. We, we had a moment. First time meeting Serge, and he's been a fan of the show for five years. You know, five, six years. Serge has been a day one. First Yo, time meeting him in historic person. historic Ari and Serge battle. Historic. Battle of fans. Historic. historic. That is classic. That is classic KFTV That's, right there. That was classic. That was a classic moment. But, yeah, man, me and Serge had a moment there in Miami. It was great. Uh, just, just exchanging words, man, and and happy to uh, to finally meet in person. So shout out to Big Surge if he's watching and, and his family, great people to uh, to come out with us. Seven seven four. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? How you doing, Andre? I'm calling in from from Massachusetts. Listen, big win tonight yeah. against the Milwaukee Bucks, and it shows that this team can beat Milwaukee, which I've been saying since they signed the last OG. And here's my major takeaway. Tom mm -hmm. Thibodeau, favorite coach, true general, expects people to show up for work. What he can get out of Bogdanovich in terms of his ability as an isolation scorer, yeah. obviously it's not going to be Julius Randle. But my point that I keep bringing up to with Randle, who the heck was he in L.A. before he came up under a true general's leadership? Yeah. An afterthought. Then he came up under Tibbs', Tibbs teaching and, and, and tough way of doing things. Then we had the two all-star games. Here's all I'm saying. We're not as strong as we were as constituted, where I think we really could have given the Boston Celtics a run. Mm -hmm. But again, if we can get this two and three seed and stay out of Boston's way with the team, with Bogdanovich giving us some of Julius Randle's scoring, not all, but some, I still think they're a better team pound for pound than Milwaukee, and this team can break through to the Eastern Conference Finals uh, to challenge the Boston Celtics. Big win. In conclusion, we got four or five games left. We're playing the Bulls two, two of those games. We cannot give up any more games to the Bulls, who don't even need to win. The Bulls don't even need to win to get into the playing tournament. we got to get those Ws. The game against Boston is going to be tough. We beat the Bulls twice. We beat the Nets. Maybe we drop one to Boston, yeah. secure that 2-3 seed. 
this team's headed to the conference finals. Thank you for taking the call. Appreciate you, my man. Throw some fives in the chat. My man said, in conclusion, Al. In conclusion, I my like, man was writing a, I like was that. writing a college essay. Yeah, I like that, man. My man said, in conclusion. Good stuff, man. Good, good, good energy by our callers tonight. I, I like that. Great job, man. From Massachusetts. He's yeah. rooting for the Knicks and in Massachusetts. Look. He's, he's one I'm of yous. Do, I'm trying to do work out here, Steve. He, he's, he's one of yous, man. Okay, well, relax over there. I moved out here. I'm not from here. Relax. You and everybody else likes to do this to me. I've been doing it for 25 plus years, man. Stop that. Stop. Oh, man. All love, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. We having a good time here. 102, 109. Nick Smack fire out of the Bucks in the second half. Brunson burner cooking. This kid is unbelievable, man. But, but to the caller's point, though, um, yeah, yeah, look, you got to give Tibbs a lot of credit. Uh, you know, iHeart. Look at what, what iHeart said. iHeart said what a lot of us have noticed and have talked about. How much his defense improved on their tips? How much tips helped them defensively? Because he wasn't that guy coming to the Knicks. If he was that guy, he would never have been a journeyman. Look how much better he got. If iHeart was who he was coming into the league, he went from the Rockets, he was on Denver, Right? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't have been bad. The Clippers. If iHeart was was who he was now, then he would never be. He would never be this journeyman. That's just that uh, that we got. No, not at all. And you could see the amount of. Look, you gotta give Tom Thibodeau his credit, man. I mean, think about everybody that's just improved under Tom Thibodeau. Yeah. Whether it was like guys that were on this team that are off this team now. Or guys that are currently on this team. Like, you can go from Randall, who's been here. You get the big RJ, Quickly, all those guys. Isaiah Hartenstein, right? Brunson's gotten better. Josh Hart's been much better. Like, yeah. Dante's been much better. Like, yes, these guys have to put in the work outside of what Tom Thibodeau does. But the culture, the mindset, all of that is, you know, falling through, trickling down to what he is trying, what this team's trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish. So, you got to give kudos to the head coach, man. I mean, I this team is just, it's so different, CP. Yeah. It is just so different from years past. Like, let me ask you this question. I'm going to ask the entire fan base. Yep. If ask you, away. For 20 years of the suffering that we've had to go through, yeah. right? Yeah. Would you go through it again to get where we are today? Yeah. I feel the same for way. Sure. Joy wouldn't be special if it wasn't for pain. Ooh, that's a bar right there. It's a bar. You know who said that? A great philosopher said that. You know who said that? You? 50 Cent. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping me on my toes over here. That's, Hold that's on. right. That's right. You got to know your history, man. You got to know your bars. Mm. Study the mathematics. Look to everybody in the chat, man. All right. You know that, that, that you know you know why this one feels a lot better too, man. Because that that Chi Town loss really didn't sit right with me, man. No, with a sucked. lot of us, right? It sucked. That that Chi Town loss was something else, man. Because it was Scott Foster that ruined the night. That is true. That yeah, that is true, man. Uh, do we have LP? LP, let's go. Yo, yo, yeah. CP, can you hear me? Can you hear me, CP? Yo, it's your show, God. Let's go. Yo, yo, CP, Alex, what's good, man? Hey, good. thanks for bringing me on. Now, I just, just want to say I'm glad we won tonight, man. It's been up, down, up, down, as we all know. So, you know, just wanted to call in, just give a quick shout out, Knicks Nation. And I'm um, just glad we won. And hopefully we can go back to Chicago and finish that off and um, and just finish the season right. But that's it, fellas. Thanks a lot. Always rapid fire to the point. LP, we appreciate it, man. Good points. Good points by the homie L- LP. All right, who else we got on the Discord? Call us up, man, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Now let's go to LB on the Discord. Went from LP to LB. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Yo, what's going on, brother? You can hear me? Loud and clear, man. How you doing? Not too bad, man. Good win tonight. Just want to say a couple of quick things. Yeah. Um, First thing, first thing I want to say, is I know this is going to be a hot take, but I feel like Brunson is better than um, better than 
What's the, um? I'm sorry. I'm yep. Had sorry. A brain fart real take, quick. Take your time. Better take than your D time. Lillard and <clears throat> he's better than D Lillard mm-hmm. and Giannis. I know D, um Giannis is a you know he he already won an MVP. D Lillard he's one of the greatest point guards ever. But as of right now, come on, bro. Like he's consistently been showing us like he's one of the top players in the league. You look at how much they had, how much, what, they both had, what, 51? Brunson had 43 by himself. He basically had the same amount as them. A big game, crunch yeah. time. Like, I, I'm just, sometimes I'll just be watching the Knicks game and I'll be like, yo, we really got one now. Like, we yeah. have one. Like, that's, excuse me, I almost cursed on the family show. Yeah, but, it's all right. Yo, I'm just, oh, man, it's just, it's just beautiful to see Brunson out there every night just cooking. I just hope we could get him some help. Some, just hope, um, um, Bogdanovich did a, <clears throat> did a great job today, scoring some points off the bench. We was able to give him a couple of minutes rest. We got to get him some rest, man. We got to give him a couple of minutes to to breathe. Josh Hart got a good rest tonight. I was surprised to see him sitting on the bench for most of the fourth quarter, but that's because um, Bogdanovich was cooking a little bit, so he let him cook. And, uh, you know, I want to give two people props before I go. I want to give Tibbs his props because I'm hard on Tibbs, but he's been – showing way more flexibility. I don't know what's got it. I don't know if it's his coaching staff, but he's been showing way more flexibility. And we got to give some props to, to to the owner, Mr. Dolan. We was killing him. He finally took a step back, hired some people that know what they're doing, and we looking decent. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all have a great night. Let's go next. Appreciate it, man. Great call. Be safe out there on the road. Call back anytime. So to him, all right, we just kind of keep it moving, man. To the phones. We got people on the phones too, Al. 913-913, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? Another call from Massachusetts, man. Whoa. Kyle from Massachusetts. You, Al, your peoples are yep. calling that's, in tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it, relax. He don't want to claim us. That's cool. But anyway, <laughs> shout out to you guys. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, the last caller, Everybody always talking about getting brunch of the rest. You know what it is? My man is so dominant. He's so dominant that we don't we don't want to lose him. We don't want to break him, man. We yeah, just want to yeah. put him in the bag and just, you know, put him up on the shelf and just look at him. Because he's so <laughs> – this man is – yo, this man Brunson is so dominant. Yeah. I was I was having a moment today. I was watching the game, and I'm like, yeah, he just give bucket, bucket, bucket. And yeah. then I look at the screen, and they say, oh, Brunson got the most points. Scored scored in the season against the Milwaukee Bucks in 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 the history of the NBA, and I'm like, mm, who would he pass? Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, and you know those those dudes get calls. They get that they get the bubble wrap calls. My man don't get calls, and he got the most points scored in the season against that team with Giannis and Brook Lopez and you know defenders. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this dude is. Y'all, hey, y'all enjoy this man is special, man. Rapid yeah. fire. I've been, I'm 44 years old. I've been watching these Knicks since I was nine, and I ain't never seen a dude that's dominant like this, including Pat, including Carmelo. This man is dominant, yo, and he's little. So y'all enjoy that, man. Y'all yep. enjoy y'all show. Appreciate y'all. Knicks till I'm gone. I'm call, out. call back anytime, man. Another satisfied Knicks fan tonight. Another happy Knicks fan tonight, Al. Yeah. Then I see that trick. They're all trying to get me to claim Massachusetts. We don't want them. It's, it's reverse psychology at this point. <laughs> they put you on the spot, man. They said, are you with us or not? You know, you, you claim all this, uh, you know, Westchester White Plains stuff. Mm. They said, are you are you claiming us or not up here in, in, in the mass in the mass state? I don't know. No. What's, what's Massachusetts called? <laughs> I said the Bay the, State? The mass state. What's it called? Bay State. Bay? Yeah, Bay, like the the Bay, like you're at the Bay. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, Bay State. That's good. Appreciate it. The more you know. Thank you, man. I appreciate hey, man, that. I, you know, I try to be worldly. Appreciate the the education on that. Yes. So he said, are you with us in the Bay State or not, bro? No. <laughs> <laughs> Too many Dunkin' Donuts out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. That, that's great. But, you know, on, on the Brunson thing, He's right in that it just to to have a guy like that who's able to elevate his game when his team needs it the most. We haven't seen it in a long time. We have not seen that in a long time. And you always know when he's going to have a good game with the way that he starts the game. Yeah, sometimes he slow starts and he finishes strong. But when he starts on point, 
you know there's really nothing that you can do. Yeah, 23 points in the first half. Yeah. You I mean, look. Brunson was just cooking, man. Yeah. He was just on a whole other level. This is what he does, though. Like, And he's been doing this against the Bucks this entire season where they just can't stop him. I mean, the perimeter defense is just so horrendous for this team, CP, which is like this is where they're just missing Drew Holiday. That that trade not only shook up the East, but it made the Bucks worse because they don't have somebody. Like, if you're going to get Dame, I feel like you need a coach that's going to be so offensively, like, mind like you need somebody like close to like a d and tony to really unlock that yeah and they don't have that man i mean you can't try to have a defensive presence with dame willard where you should really be leaning more offense heavy so is doc the good fit for this team if you had more defenders out there that were capable like pat conton is okay malik beasley's like eh, i don't know man but brunson has been able to just Oh, and he's been doing this entire season, which has just been so fantastic. I mean, he had one bad game, right? And then he bounces back, and then it's just he goes on another spree. Yeah. And that's why when he has these bad games, it's like, okay. Like, he can't be great every single night. Like, And when he's not great, it's like out of 82 games, what is it, five? So how can you be mad at that? It's everybody else that needs to show up for for this team, man, especially without Julius. But – that's just what that's what it is. I see everybody in the chat right now wondering uh the you know the base state. They're asking about Worcester. They ask about Dorchester. Yeah, yeah they Berry. they want to know how to say all those things, you know. They, yeah, it's, man, they're, it's trying a to, whole, they're trying to learn. I'm, it's I'm a whole other life. Way, around all those towns ways, yeah. It's a whole other life and culture up there, man. It's you know, different type of people. It's kinda like Shelbyville and the Simpsons, you know what I'm saying? Ah, the wicked sick up here, <laughs> CP. <laughs> nah, Shelby, Shelbyville is like day. Jersey. Shelbyville is like Jersey, for real. No, no. Oh, my God. All, That's all, what all I hear every day. And I'm like, I, I, you know, I speak like a New Yorker. They're like, you're not from here, are you? I'm like, yep. nope, not at all. <laughs> mm. Imagine that. That's rich. That, that, them commenting on how you speak, right? Yes. That, that, that is rich. That is rich, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks get the dub, a much needed dub, man. 122 to 109. We are uh, recapping. We are trashing Boston and uh, hearing from the fans tonight, man. Call us up 657-383-1509 or you can hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. Okay, Uh, let me get to some more calls. Take a couple more here. 646, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? 646, hello. Hello? Yes, hello, sir. Hey, what's up, CP? What's up, Alex? Good, Sorry, man. I was waiting for, like, the screening thing to come on. How you guys doing? No problem, man. No problem. Good. How you doing? So, hey, I got a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you guys noticed? Um, the last few games since we've been seeing that we've been getting blitzed a little bit more uh, with Brunson and the way we're reacting and our playmakers getting to the top of the key and making the right play. Like, what have you seen from the team during this time frame, even though some of the losses and whatnot, but the way we've been able to kind of crack that code and how does that help us in the playoffs? And the other thing is with our three-point shooting, Tell me why we can't make a run like these Miami teams have yeah. the last few years. Well, but, but yeah, I mean, with the three-point shooting, they absolutely can make a run. You just don't know if you if it's there every night. You just got to see, you know? I, I don't even think we knew Miami's was going to be there. They just proved it. You won't know until you play the games. Playoffs are very unpredictable in that way, you know? And then in, in terms of um, – the attention that you were talking about, or, or their execution, rather, I think they're prepared for it now. They're ready for it. They know that this is the team that we're going in for, in with, and this is what we can expect, the attention that we're going to um, – that Brunson is going to command, and so they're going to have to execute off of that. So that's why I Heart and Hartenstein are your keys to keeping that going. And you saw it again tonight, second half. Yeah. Uh, that's on you. I, 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 you probably wait. I thought, I thought, I thought he was going to. No, no, no. I, I hung up. I hung up. But go ahead. No, you need to look with Isaiah Hartenstein, man, the way that he's playing. I mean, tonight was just one of those nights where you see where offense and defense both shine. I mean, defensively, I thought he did a solid job, man. I mean, he gets you a steal. I mean, the one that pointed out for me on the defensive side was they tried to get an entry pass to Giannis tonight. He 
you know, makes sure he, he blocks it. It's a loose ball on the, on the court. He dives. And then you see he's able to get, I think, to Brunson or Hart and mm -hmm. that or Dante, and they are able to find bogey out in transition for an easy layup. And you between the offense, where we talked about the floors today, and then defensively, he was just stepping up big, man. And you're going to need this. And for the Knicks, man, with Robinson getting back into the fold, you're looking for Isaiah Hartenstein to be to be healthy, to be able to play both, be able to play both offense and defense. And then with Mitch coming back strong like he did tonight, we're going to have a dangerous center tandem. Looking good. My guy, Blockness, looked to be in his bag, man. He, he he was great tonight. Definitely great tonight. So, great job by Mitchell Robinson, man. Uh, 203, 203, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? I'll watch the time. Hello, hello. hello. Yes, hello, sir. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Joe from Bridgeport, Connecticut again. How you doing, sir? Joe, today? good to hear from you, man. What do you think about tonight's game? Tonight's game was a very good game. I didn't think it would be possible after um, after uh, the, the the Bucks took the lead mm -hmm. in uh, in the game, but the but the Knicks did really good in the in the end, and they came back and did what they needed to do. So I, I had a quick question for both of you guys, mm -hmm. and I don't know how you feel about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the playoffs, and I don't know if this will help mm -hmm. or hurt. Do you think that with – there's always three referees. Mm -hmm. Do you think a fourth referee would help out with calls and getting them correct? What do you think about that? Well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I mean, they have the replay system, which is broken. Uh, they have the, the Secaucus people that they use. I just think, look, everybody has to deal with it. It's not just the Knicks. The other team is going to have to deal with it. All you want is fairness and consistency. Fairness and consistency. That's true. And both both teams are going to have true. to deal with it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just going to come down to execution. It's very rare that a game is going to come down to uh, a blown call, or you hope that it wouldn't, because there's several factors that, that play into a win or a loss. So for the Knicks, just concentrate on their game. Yeah, the refs suck tonight, but you know what? Knicks still won by 20 points. I mean, yeah, uh, 13. They still won by 13. They took care of their business. If you do that, you don't have to worry that's about the true. Rest, you know? That's that's very true. Yeah. And just in the, in relation to the other game in Chicago yeah. where um they ejected uh, uh Josh Hart out. Yeah. That really was, you know, just like I had mentioned before where Charles Smith was fouled, I think this call with Josh Hart yeah was dumb. It was really stupid. It was mm -hmm. they really blew that. I really think he was just trying to catch his balance, but other than that mm -hmm. They shouldn't have told him out for that. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, I'm okay. out. I'm out. Uh, go UConn men tomorrow. Yes, congratulations, sir. South Carolina. Salute. And congratulations to the UConn women. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. Call back anytime, man. So a guy from Bridgeport, Thank you, Connecticut. Uh, key stats of the night, Al. Key stats of the night brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Uh, both teams shooting uh, less than 50% from the field, but pretty close. 48 for the Knicks, 46 for the Bucks, 48% from downtown for the Knicks, Al. That was a big turnaround from the first half. Second half, they were really able to lock in with some three-point efficiency. Just 35% for the Bucks, who rely on their three-point shooting to get their offense going. This was the number three offense in the league, and they got held to 109 points. Great job. Great defense there. Mm. Uh, charity Stripe, 81% 81, 81 for the Knicks. A little bit better tonight. 84 for the Bucks. Knicks winning the rebounding battle. Clutch, 41-38. to 38. Great job by Hartenstein, Mitch, Josh Hart as well. Excellent. They lost the assist battle by two, 25 to 27. Nine steals for the Knicks tonight. Six blocks. 15 on the turnovers and uh, for the Bucks, 14 Bucks turnovers led to 16 Knicks points. So Knicks very opportunistic. Great job there. Uh, fast break points, the Bucks won 12 to 9. Points in the paint, 44 to 34. Al, they beat the Bucks and the points in the paint as well. Largest lead for the Knicks, 16. Largest for the Bucks, 11. Look, uh, in the game of the week preview I did yesterday, CP, there was a few categories that I mentioned. Rebounding was one. I said both teams are solid rebounding teams. Knicks need to get bounced back from what from the poor performance they had on the glass 
against Chicago. They did that 50 to 46. Another key area where I talked about it comes to the Knicks winning the uh, points in the paint battle because the Milwaukee Bucks are also good at points in the paint. Knicks were able to limit it. They, they won 44 to 34. The big one for me was that the Knicks have been on a downturn when it, over the last 10 games when it came to second chance points. Tonight, they slightly edge out the Bucks 19 to 14, but between the points in the paints and the second chance points, which I brought up in yesterday's show, these were the key areas the Knicks needed to dominate if they're going to take down the Milwaukee Bucks because that's, we know perimeter wise, like it could be hit or miss, right? Either Dante shooting the threes or not, right? Either Jalen shooting his threes or not. But if you can consistently get into the paint, get and collect the rebounds to get the second chance opportunities, if you're missing shots, that was going to be the way the Knicks were going to win tonight, and that's the way they got it done. Great points. Great great points there by you. And uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the key stats of the night brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy, man. Check out Underdog Fantasy's pick em and daily fantasy games. On the pick em side, all you're going to do is choose between two to five NBA players and predict whether or not those players are going to do higher or lower than a given stat projection that Underdog Fantasy has outlined on a given night. And you have the opportunity to win up to 20 times your money but as i said they also have the daily fantasy option which is a fun way to get involved into the game where you get into a fantasy draft you select i think it's about six players and then watch watch them pick them watch them win them pick them watch them win them and so how do we do tonight on the on the draft here al me and you drafted we missed the cutoff for the knicks and bucks game so we weren't able to draft any knicks or bucks so how do we do on the draft here let's let's check it out and see well, we both have 12 quarters left because okay. we got the West Coast games going on. Right. We both we were only able to select from the the Warriors playing the Jazz tonight or the Lakers. <laughs> they're tough. playing the the Timberwolves, yeah. right? They're the, they're playing the Timberwolves. So yeah. right now you are slightly in the lead, 155 there we go. to 140. But we both got 12 quarters left. So it's anyone's game to be had. There so, it is. There it is. You know, we will not know until the next morning. All right. Well, I'll let you know what I had for lunch tomorrow when I win, man. Uh, but my team consisting mm. of, oh, I got a juggernaut here. Chris Paul, Colin Sexton, Keontae George, Nas Reed, Anthony Davis, and D'Angelo Russell. I'm hoping AD comes through. Your team, Clay. Pods, Anthony Edwards, Ant-Man, Draymond, Rudy Gobert, and Austin Reeves. Good job, man. Good job. So oh, we'll, yeah. We'll see. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny that they, they gave my team the edge in terms of projections. But you have, you have uh, definitely more firepower. We'll see. We'll see who's right. We'll see who's right, sir. We'll see, man. Okay. We'll see. All right, let's take, uh, let's take one more call tonight. Great show, everybody. Great show. Eight- the team said J.D. will let us know if he won. <laughs> yeah, 850-850. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Hello. Hello? Yes, hello. How are you? All right, how are you? I'm, I'm good, man. Knicks won, 122-109. How you feel, man? Talk to us, man. Going just fine. Just going just fine. All right. We are the Pensacola floor. Pensacola are, on the check-in. Okay. Um, yes, we doing good. You know, we just called it the the uh, the film. We was a little big fan. We were Mitchell Robinson's grandfather, grandma. Oh, the, the, is this Mitchell Robinson's grandfather? Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. How, what what'd you think of yes. your grandson's performance tonight? He's doing excellent. He's excellent. There you go, yeah, man. You don't miss the game. There we go. So, yeah. so yeah. are you, are you his grandparents on his father's side? Is this the Robinson side or is this mom's side? I'm on his daddy's side. Okay. OG Robinson. Yes. Yeah, OG. OG Robinson. That that's what's up, man. Yeah, Mitch yeah. Mitch definitely looks like he's getting into a groove. Had a good job. Did a good job on the boards and on the defense tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he does good. He does very good. I'm glad to see him back out playing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm on his father's side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, OG yeah. man. Definitely appreciate appreciate yeah. the support, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, man. Call back anytime. 
I will do it. I will do it. Y'all shout out to everybody. And y'all, I thank y'all for uh, keeping everything 100. All right. Stay up. Stay up. All right. Oh, you too. Bye bye. All right. Family show, man. Family show, Al. Look at that. Look at that. Not even screening the calls. We play call a roulette, and it's Grandpa Robinson calling in to talk about the play of the block nest monster. That's so sick. That's where else, so where sick. else do they do that? But the number one show for the fans. Right I try to tell you it's a family show. There we go. Literally, it's a family show. It's a I mean, family we have show. players' families, family members calling in now. We literally have players' family members calling in. Excellent. Excellent, man. Salute to Grandpa Robinson. Call back anytime. And, and salute to Mitch, man. I told you, that's, that's my guy, man. Money Mitch, man. He's a good dude. He always comments on KFTV. You know, he keeps in touch with us, lets us know how he's feeling. And there it is, man. Throw some fives in the chat for Grandpa Robinson calling in from Pensacola, Florida, Al. Pensacola's finest. All right, let me run through some Super Chats real quick here as, as we conclude tonight's program. Let me run through some Super Chats. Okay, here we go. Uh, Redman's MagFed Games, $10 Super Chat says, Great game, Knicks Nation. Let's go. We are without Randall, but I still believe we can get to the Eastern Conference Finals with this squad. $10 Super Chat from Gatsu Al says, Wonder who was the best player on every floor. Becky. I'm not sure what he missed that. David Billings, $5 Super Chat says, We needed this tight bad. Uh, oh, I think he's talking about Becky Hammond. Sorry. Okay, got you. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Thank you. He says, uh, We needed this bad. Oh, just revealed the playoff merch. Didn't need to do that just yet. Uh, it says, we needed this type bad. Their second half play was impeccable. Brunson was with a single turnover. It's crazy. Shout out to the bench. Shout out to David Billings, man. Nixon Dimes, appreciate you. Five franchise channel members gifted. And also says, I'm jumping out to play no uh, parachute. Shout out to Will Entz. It's the fact that the Knicks are still playing good. And, and uh, despite the injury, says a lot. Salute to him. Gary Riker got that. Freddie Gonzalez got that. ONA got that, and William Burton got you, man. So salute to everybody who contributed all of the uh, donations. And now for the reveal of the playoff merch. Now available on Al. It is our first artist series collection with our guy, Chris Murray, man, a of, of, of famous local NYC artist. The collaboration... There you go, man. New York versus the world. And we have available the hoodies, the two-sided hoodies. Mm. We have the T-shirts. We have the poster, limited edition poster, only 50 available dope 18 by 24 poster. We got the snapbacks. And we got the sticker pack as well, man. All available on shop.nixfantv.com, man. Check us out. And check out the rest of uh, the merch, man. Brought to you by your good friends at KnicksFanTV.com. So uh, that is that. Remember that this show is available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. If you guys did, salute to the replay gang. And we'll be back tomorrow, man, for Knicks Weekly. Great show, Al. Great win by the Knicks. Salute to the Robinson gang, the Robinson family, for calling in and closing the show. And salute to Domo the Prodigy, man. Salute to Domo the Prodigy, man. All right, we out of here, people. See you guys tomorrow for next weekly. Great bounce back win. Let's go, Knicks.